conference room. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, good point. Thank you very much for that. That's definitely important. <laughs> Don't want to make the same same mistake. Um, okay. So, and then is there a second on that? You have to second it. <laughs> I do have to second that. I would second that. Um, and then I would move to item number 2.01, which is the approval of the public safety committee minutes of the fourth. Um, can I get a motion on that, please? Move to approve. Yeah, second. Second. And then I would move to the third item, which is our public forum tonight. Um, so if we just want to kind of <laughs> get into the group for that. And then did we, we wanted to move, did, what did we want to move again? Like, is there any technological changes that maybe, to this or is this for afterwards? I think maybe just to, um, as a, just a point of information, just to put the meeting in um, recess for maybe five minutes, just to give us a chance to run upstairs and make sure that there is a public place for folks to come if they do want to come to the remainder of the meeting and just as a, a point of information i'm not seeing any members of the public um here and i was upstairs a couple minutes ago and didn't see anyone up there milling around either okay okay that sounds good um so did we want to make space for that right now then like did we want to make take that recess now or later or are we kind of good to go because we don't have any attendees either in here online um so if that's directed at me i would just say there's no members of the public um and so i mean from my perspective the point of of being down here for the first part of the meeting was to allow for public comment with the big tv so if okay. there's uh, i don't see any reason for us to stay down here so a recess seems appropriate okay perfect then i'm gonna go ahead and make that call since i don't see any attendees waiting in the waiting room online and there are no folks um, for public comment at this time so um i would go ahead and take that recess five minute recess and then get i guess get going again at 5 42. thanks everyone We are going to move into item 4.01, which is the discussion of the CNA report recommendations. Um, attached to that is obviously the, the task at hand, that resolution where there's um, a report due back, an initial report to the full council um, of, in January 2022 on progress made toward evaluating and offering recommendations um, to the findings in the report. Um, so that's why we're obviously here tonight is to kind of go through that. Um, one thing that would be helpful to me personally um, and, and, and a little bit selfishly is I, I missed the last meeting and maybe just to kind of recap, Zariah, and not to put you on the spot, just a little overview of where we left off and where we most likely, where it would be helpful to pick up tonight um, just because I was, I was out not doing too well. Yeah, and Jane, I realized that I pushed the chairing on you, but I'm happy to take that back now that I'm a little bit <laughs> more. So just the totally five minute break. Fine. I think it's very discussion oriented <laughs> anyway. I don't, I don't really mind either way, whatever works for the group. But um, yeah, I think we're just going to have this kind of open discussion style anyway. If that's, if I'm all right in assuming that. Great, and actually, so just to so recap, last time we really just had an organizational meeting. I did send just Jane and Karen. A kind of summary of what, what we had talked about in terms of process and also some of the things we wanted to prioritize such as things that would be in the um ppoa contract karen and i did not communicate between this meeting and between the last meeting and this meeting so i didn't completely realize although i should have anticipated that she wouldn't be here so i don't know that we're more prepared to go over um in terms of structure to go over these things today than we were last week. But I think hopefully just since we've talked through process in terms of how we're gonna do things, um, and I assume that we've all read at least section one of the report that maybe we can just go ahead and dive into a discussion without Karen. One of the things that I proposed is that um, we 
in the future for the next meetings, we are a little bit more structured in terms of having a list of all of the different recommendations that we're gonna talk about that day, especially if we're gonna be potentially going across um, different sections for certain themes, such as the union contract. Um, and that we then can kind of have like a record that the public can see and um, we can edit in terms of like what we're thinking and what the discussion is on that. We do not have that today, presumably because Karen probably did not see my email um, and also isn't here. So I wonder how folks feel about just diving into that we go ahead and start with section one as we planned on doing last week and dive in. And one of the things that I'm asking for in that specific case is also a lot of this is about internal um, BPD, <clears throat> what is currently going on at BPD. And I'm not sure that anyone other than Officer um, Orn, am I saying your name correctly? And Milo would have information on that. And because Karen's not here, we didn't have, we were planning on having other folks in the administration kind of as the weeks went on, come by and talk us through some of the things and or give their input. So if you two are comfortable with kind of being the points of contact on talking through some of this and if anything has happened, then I think the, I still feel comfortable with us as a stakeholder group talking about like prioritizing or not prioritizing and things like that. And or just saying like, this is just something that the police commission needs to work with the department on implementing an X amount of time. So that was a lot of me talking and <laughs> suggesting. So I'll pause for a second and let folks. Um, if I may just hop in that that sounded perfect to me. I'm totally fine and comfortable moving forward in that way. But again, that's kind of up to the folks that are in the room, um, Officer Oren and, um, you know, Commissioner Grant um, and Director Green. And yeah, I just want to make sure that everyone like can can feel that that is productive in a way that's helpful tonight. I wanna make sure that we are um, looking at the same document. So there's two documents. There's one that has the track changes on it for all the changes that were requested um, through, through this process. And then there's a final copy. So we're all looking at the final copy, correct? Yes. I'm okay. looking at the final copy and I think that's the one on the website. So I assume that's the one that folks most easily have access to. I think both should be on the website. Is I that think not the only place? one that's posted? Oh, I thought both. I thought I posted, <laughs> requested to have them both posted mm -hmm. just so to be fully transparent as to what was changed um, and what remained the same. Yeah, there's the final report. There's one link under there, and then there's the. I'm not really seeing the original, unless. There's, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. <laughs> so. Okay. Thank you. So, is it the September 20, 2021 report? Is this what we're talking September about? September thirtieth, twenty twenty one. It says final report. Mm -hmm. But there were two versions. Is essentially. There was one version and then there were two rounds of comments from the mayor and um, yeah, the, early, responses are the police there. department. And so there were some changes, but the final version is the final version. So how do I we think know? They both said final, right, Taisha? I think there was two versions that say final report, unfortunately. There was she... two that said final. That's why I just want to make sure that everybody is looking at the same thing. Um, but there was one that was done before and it was the final report. Then there were changes from um, the mayor's office and the police department. And then there was another final report that came after that. But so there's actually three because then we had a track changes report as well. Um, so we can see what was changed um, in the report itself. So let me scroll up because I do have the final final. And it should... Is there a date on here? It just says September 2021. Yeah, that's what mine says. Okay. So if we have September 2021, we have the final. I would think I would assume so. 172 pages. 172. Let's see. <laughs> well, uh, 
it won't say that. Let me go to the 161 pages. It's the last I've got page. 112 here. Oh, so you're missing a lot. I got 161. That's the, okay. that's the final one. Is it right? possible to have it emailed, the final final? Yes. Uh, yeah, I can just email the link. Whoever has it, definitely, or I can email that out to Jeff. That'd be great. Great, I'm working on it. Thank you. Um, it's uh, shorter than the first one. This one hey. is shorter than the original. Jay Nick at BurlingtonBT.gov is okay. That'll work. Yep. Great. Great. Okay. Thanks for checking on that, Taisha. <laughs> Problem. Um, could I ask a couple of points of clarification? Of course. So I know there were some corrections and clarifications that needed to be done. I just want to have an understanding regarding um, what I'm hearing about the, the tracked changes. So were these items that were additional items outside of corrections and clarifications were they removed by CNA? Um, they were removed by CNA at the request of the mayor's office and the BPD. And they were those clarifications and corrections. So the round of clarifications and corrections that happened, that is that round. So, I just want to make sure that the integrity of the report is intact. There was nothing removed outside of, because that's a big chunk of the original draft that's missing. So there's more, it's a longer version, right? Taisha, the final version is the longer version, not the shorter no, version. No, the final version is the shorter version. Then I don't know. <laughs> Oh, so the final, but Milo, um, sorry, Commissioner Grant, um, there were some changes that were made uh, by the request of, you know, the mayor's office and um, BPD. Some of those changes CNA did not make, and some of them they did, and so. Um, in making those changes, it made the report shorter. There are, um, there is a track changes copy so that you can see what the original report said, and then you can see the changes that were made. Um, those changes were not prompted or made by CNA because CNA wanted to make the changes. Those changes came um, from requests. I'm sorry, those changes came from they came from the requests uh, um, from the administration and from the um, BPD. And I believe that the letter from um, the mayor and from Chief Murad, Acting Chief Murad, are, should be on that website that outlines the changes that they asked, they asked for. As okay. I read prior, is that stuff still up there? The, the both of those, so there's, and. So I'm going to start by saying, again, I, let's assume, I hope that we can assume, because this is why we're here, is to read through the assessment, that, the, that we're going to take the assessment as it is. And again, that doesn't mean that we're going to agree on moving forward or prioritizing all of the conclusions, but that like Taisha said, there was a process about which this came about. And I suggest if people have questions and she was the one who managed that process, they just reach out to her, maybe Taisha. Sorry, I'm going to go on a first name basis, like I did with the joint committee, unless folks tell me otherwise. Um, you can send out the track change ver version so that any of the stakeholder groups that are interested can see it. But I think for now, let's just assume that the final version that we have 
is the best version that we have and to move along with it. There are on the same website, so the burlingtonbt.gov slash BPD assessment, there's two memos, one from Mayor Weinberger and one from Acting Chief Murad, and their CNA's responses to those memos saying, this is, yes, we will change this as you asked because of this, or like, no, we won't change this as you asked because of this. So I think we had a fairly transparent process to get from version one to final version, final version, version one to final version, version two. So... Um, okay, th thank you for that. I just, I just want to be very clear uh, once again, because I just want to make sure, um, and, and I would believe that the Bur greater Burlington community would want to be sure that the integrity of the report is whole. So uh, just to clarify, we have changes that were requested some of which CNA agreed with and that others, they stood by their original recommendations, yet those others were still removed. Is, I just want to be clear that that's what we're saying. Yeah. And the track document will show what was removed. The only yes. people who removed things from CNA from the CNA report was CNA. So if they said, we're not changing this, it wasn't changed. Is that correct, Taisha? See, that's not what I'm hearing. It's My apologies. Kind of, it's kind of correct. Um, I would say it's about 99% correct. Um, there are some things that uh, CNA didn't want to change, but changed um, because of the arguments from um, the memos that said we have to change this because this is how we do things here in Burlington. Um, so it's not because, so it wasn't, it wasn't like they agreed with the change, um, some of the changes, but they allowed those changes because of the environment that's here in Burlington. So mostly, yes, I don't, um, I don't want to misspeak and say, oh no, all of the changes they agreed with, I, I don't believe that to be true. Do we know if any of those changes based on how we quote unquote do things in Burlington went against best practice? Because we know we have a lot of things that aren't currently being done. With it's been best, a long time. Haven't kept up with best practice. It's been a long time. I don't think that CNA um, compromise best practice for uh, some of the things that were asked to be changed. Um, I think that they made themselves really clear about, well, this is best practice and this is why this is not gonna be changed. So a lot of the things that were asked to be changed were not changed because it would go um, against best practices. Some of the things that they wanted to be changed is like how something was presented. Um, like in, in particular, the major thing that that was changed was the number of police officers needed. Um, and some of those things got changed. Some of them didn't, some of them got altered. Um, but for the most part, I will say that um, they're just going off of best practice. Uh, and so they didn't, they didn't waver on that whatsoever. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate the uh, clarifications. Mm -hmm. right. so, uh, you're, you're I have a, a question. Um, Go ahead. And I don't know if I'm looking at the correct report now because it, there are a couple of final versions. Um, I, I'm just looking at page two that I have. It talks about assessment areas of focus, talks about training and operations, racial and social and economic bias analysis, staffing and workload analysis, that's... Yes. But I'm, but I, what, I, what, we're, what I'm fearful of and, and the folks I represent on downtown is when they took a look at workload analysis, did, I'm not so sure they really delved into the issues we have, our community has with graffiti and retail theft 
and, and a boatload of ordinance violations that go on every day downtown. And, and that's what, you know, um, so I, I want to make sure that that was really analyzed closely. I, I, I don't think it was. I mean, they the so, so before we get too far into, we're not even, we're not even discussing that section this week. We can go down so many rabbit holes if we keep going off track. So let's really like, we're looking at recommendations. We're looking at them one at a time. For now, I think we assume that this is the best analysis that we have and we move forward with it. When we get to that section, I think we can ask those questions on the recommendations, but I think we're gonna get very, very distracted a lot of the times if we keep, I, if, I think we have to be ready as a group to decide this is the best analysis that we have and let's talk about it. It's not perfect, it's the best analysis that we have. So section one that I have, section one, 1.1.1, 1. 1. 1, Mm -hmm. We're talking about policies, training, and operations. Mm -hmm. yep. And it says the B BPD should consider adding cultural competency training to those listed in Section 8 of mm -hmm. the Directive DD-03. Is that what we're all looking at? Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then it says priority one, and then I see priority two. I don't see anything other than priority one or two throughout the document for the most part. Sorry, say that again. The, that it, sure. it gives a, there's a column for priority one or two. Um, where are, I'm not, at least that's, it says priority. Or maybe that's at the end of the, there's a, at the end of the document. Oh, I see others. Yeah, Um, at, the, at the very end of the document, there's they, they rehash everything and they talk, have, have a priority column. But, oh, right, right. Yeah. Yes, there is a priority column and that is to help the BPD um, prioritize which ones are really important and which ones are um, can be done at a later date or be phased in, as far as I yep. understand. Yeah. So then to address maybe the question that you were indirectly asking is I feel like they talked to a wide group of people. I think that they were made aware of most of the uniqueness of Burlington. I don't think Burlington is the only city that deals with graffiti or theft. And I, I assume that they talked to, I don't know everybody that they talked to because that wasn't released as far as I know, but I think that they talked to a wide enough sector of Burlington that a wide enough issues of it, folks' concerns would have been heard. Yes. I don't know who was all on that list either. Um, and that's by design to protect the people who, who were interviewed, um, protect them from you know, just when you're doing collecting data like that, you want to be really careful with, you know, talking about who was interviewed and someone could figure out who said what and, and all of that. So I, I don't really, I don't know. I know a few people just because, um, mm -hmm. but I don't know the masses. I know that they had a list of like 75 people or and, and entities and organizations and they chose uh, maybe a, a half or a quarter of those. Um, so that's pretty much what I know. Yeah. And then just one final question, because I saw that Karen hopped on for just a second. Is she joining us or was that a fluke? Um, I saw, yeah, Karen Durfee. I saw that she jumped on momentarily. I gave her the ability to speak and she is not here anymore. So I'm presuming she just popped in and has popped out, but if that changes, I'll promote her again. Okay, great. Um, okay, so then are we going to just hop into the section itself though? Like, do we wanna go through the, the recommendations or like what, what do we wanna do for that first section? And again, if I can just look to Officer Oren, are we saying that correctly? 
Tommy Oren, that's my first name. It's fine, you can drop the title. I appreciate that. Oh, I couldn't quite hear you. It's his first name. Tommy Oren, that, that's fine. You don't have to say Officer Oren. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Oren and uh, Milo, I feel like in terms of even like giving us a pulse on if any of this has been addressed, I feel like you all and or Karen would have been the only folks in the room who would know. I could be wrong on that. Um, but I think it's like, if we could just have a quick check on like, is this something that still needs to be done? And then if yes, then we can keep discussing it. Um, I would have to defer to Oren. My understanding from what Acting Chief Murat said at our last police commission meeting was that he had already started working on some of the recommendations. However, that was prompted by the fact that we were talking about who would be representing the commission here. We had not been previously advised that he had started working on the recommendations or which specific recommendations he had started working on. So I would have to ask um, Orrin if he knows what has already been worked on. And if not, we are probably going to have to ask the chief for uh, some kind of communication around what he's actually worked on. I, I have to... Um... And in the far to the administration, I'm uh, I'm I'm here on behalf of the union. I don't mind answering questions, but I really only have a general knowledge uh, of how the PD works from you know my desk. I, I wouldn't have a clue about all the stuff the Chief Murad and Chief Lebrecht uh, do on a day-to-day -day basis. Like just this first one, I'll be honest, I have no idea if he's been working on adding cultural competency training to those listed in Section uh, Five of Directive Three. So I I don't want to. You know, accidentally mislead um, anybody here by you know trying to speak on behalf of the administration. As a union, I'm very happy to answer that, but I can really kind of just give you general answers that could be wrong. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so I would, I guess, I would uh, make a request that um, the Public Safety Committee should request some kind of document from the chief where he summarizes um, any recommendations that he's completed or that are in progress. Um, and then we can make the recommendations based on what we believe the priorities should be. And then I would guess check things off if, if there's things that he's, he's already done. I would have uh, love to have him communicate um, so that we were had more of a balance between uh, the community and the department priorities, because um, I'm sure there are probably some compromises that would need to be made. But um, it, so I guess that would be my recommendation is that we get something from the department administration as to exactly what are they working on, um, since they have not previously offered that information. Thank you. Great. I think that's a great recommendation. And I, I do know, I know Karen was planning on having this be a little bit more curated. And again, just with the death in her family, she's been out of pocket. So I think great suggestion and we'll pass that on. And if Karen doesn't make it to the next meeting either, then I'll, I'll be the liaison for that. Go ahead, Jeff. No, I was just going to agree with Milo. It makes a lot of sense because we, we could waste a lot of time talking about things that are already in process. Right. Um, so that should definitely be done before our next meeting, I would imagine. It's almost hard to move forward tonight in any way, really, without that. So I'm going to propose that we try to move forward because I think it would actually be really useful to try mm -hmm. and then see what got, like, I think even for planning the next meeting and thinking about, like, oh, how do we want to do this? Even if we do this, we've already here, we've already yeah. spent an hour, I would say let's at least spend 30 minutes just talking through and see how it goes. And that'll give Karen, or if Karen's not here, me a little bit more information on what would be useful for next time. That sounds totally fine. 
Does that feel okay to you, Jeff, Nick, Taisha? Absolutely, yeah. Folks in the room? Great. Okay. I mean, just to start off, cultural competency training sounds good. Um, I mean, that can take on many facets, many different directions. You could talk about a whole host of things. It's got to be something that's, I guess, tailored to tailored to Burlington. Um, every community is different, so um, but it sounds good. Sounds like it would be smart to have that training. And Taisha, can I ask you a follow-up question on that? Is um, I haven't taken the trainings yet that the REIB department is doing, but I guess I'm curious, like, is this something that is supposed to be covered by kind of all of the employees going forward taking this? Is that part of that? Or is that just a small subsection? Uh, the training is for all employees, all boards, all commission commissions, and all city councilors. And um, it is a uh, anti-racism curriculum. And yeah, I mean, it's not, I would say that it is what I'm calling basic training. So everyone has a basic understanding of what race, racism, racialization is. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we move forward with all of these different policies and systems changes, um, people can't say, well, I didn't know because they've taken this basic training so that they can know. Um, it's not going to make, you know, people not be racist. Um, it's gonna give them the information about their actions on, on race and racism. Great, and as someone who maybe is less familiar with terms like the difference between, you know, the training that you're doing, what do you, and sorry if I'm putting you on the spot, feel free to ignore my questions, but it like, cause cultural competency sounds, I guess, broader and less to, like specific maybe than the training that you're doing. Would you say that that is, if you had to give a recommendation on what, if the directive of cultural competency training should be added, one, do you agree that it should be cultural competency that should be added? And if so, do you feel like this covers it or do you feel like there's something missing from what you know? I think cultural competency training is a weak, watered-down version of anti-racism training. Okay. Um, I don't think that it does anything to move the needle. I don't think, I think it's in the same lane as implicit bias training, um, as in there will be no changes made. People will just sit there and listen and nothing will change about their actions or, or their systems or their policies. If I may, um add to that because that's certainly a big concern that I've had. Um, we recently had a speaker at the police commission um, as, as part of our series who raised some very interesting points about the type of, um, in particular, bias and implicit bias training that has occurred in the past and the deficiencies of those particular trainings and how these trainings needed to be looked at differently because previous trainings just weren't effective for a number of reasons. So I would be looking for um, additional training, but not what they've had before. Um, now, part of it is, is trying to get the information of, of what has been happening at the department, because as a commit, uh, when I was initially on the committee to review policing policies and ask for the information, I never got it. I've asked for the information several times as a police commissioner, never got it. Um, then I was told, okay, well, right now everything's going toward providing CNA with the information they need, and that's going to be part of it. But then apparently we still didn't get um, information. So I think that that's a big part of it is to get a frank and honest uh, information about what has been done in the past that frankly has not been adequate and how we need to change it for the future 
um, in including having a better understanding of the diversity um, in our community, because we have a lot of problems uh, that are due to the increased diversity in our community and and people not people not knowing each other. Um, thank you. Thanks, and I'm just going to take notes on my end, and then find a way to share them more broadly. Um, to me, this um, finding number one, 1.1, 1.2, um, we didn't receive any cultural competency or any kind of bias or anti-racism training from, from the police department. Um, and so uh, after the CNA report came out, um, I was informed that they had gone to Alabama uh, to look at the um, lynching museum down there um, and deemed that as one of the trainings for the officers. Um, I don't think all of the officers went, I think it was a small group, but um, I have yet to receive any type of uh, information about cultural competency or anti-racism anti training. So um, I will say that hopefully they're working on that. This is one of the things that they're working on changing, um, but I, I have no evidence of, of anything that has happened in the past. And I think one of the things at least that I've heard about um, from some of the officers is, I mean, I think training can be really hard because training can be hard in terms of finding the time for it. And then training can be hard in terms of like, what do people walk away with? And I think to Milo's point is if, if, training is just a checkbox in terms of everybody needs to go to this. And I mean, I think the, you know, I, at least to me, like hearing something like the lynching museum, like that makes sense to me in terms of if you don't have trainings available that kind of scratch beyond the surface, then that's, you look for kind of more cultural outlets or other learning experiences. So um, I guess just wanna say that in terms of, I think sometimes we just very quickly jump to like, oh, we need to do more training, but we don't necessarily know what that means or who's gonna give it or what the outcome is gonna be. So I think that part of um, this recommendation is, is having, an extended conversation about it, and quite frankly, one that's taken seriously. Um, as I just said, this is something that I've taken really to heart, and I have been continually frustrated by the fact that there's been this lip service given, but no proof, nothing to back it up, and we still have these, the numbers show increasing disparity despite incidents going down and that has to be addressed in some way you know we have multi you know two lawsuits that are still not resolved um we as a police commission continue to view footage that's disturbing um for a variety of reasons uh, including racial bias so it, it is something that you know, I almost feel I could put something together. I could put something together that would be better than whatever it is that our officers have supposedly had. Um, I, especially when we talk about doing like a five minute review of the history of policing in our, our uh, country and how it's impacted people of color. So I, I really feel that a lot of that is missing. Like, why would an officer not understand why um, a person from a BIPOC background uh, might distrust them, right? Why would that be occurring? Like there's a real lack of understanding of, of why that is. Um, 
and, and a lot of other things that I won't go into, but I suffice it to say, I think this should be a very high priority because we continue to have issues with it. The numbers are very, very clear. Um, we are, what, five, six percent of the population for uh, Black Americans in Burlington, yet when guns are drawn, it's 54 percent. And then we were told, the, the commission was told it was related to warrants. Well, then the city statisticians go back and they look at that and they come back and they say, no, it's actually not related to warrants. So what is it? You know, we've asked for a strategic plan. We have not gotten it. We've asked numerous times. It's just like the issue isn't being recognized yet. We continue to have things going on in our community that, that aren't acceptable. So um, I'll leave it there. I just think it's a, it's a really big priority and we need to be honest and we need to be real about it. Thank you. Go ahead, Jeff. I, 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 I know there's issues out there um, that need to be addressed racially, uh, for sure. Um, and we could talk about the data all day long, but to, to move this forward, I'm just curious that of all of the police departments across the country, there has to be somebody that has kind of a best practices in terms of this type of, you know, education for police officers. I mean, isn't it something you can find out there that's that's generally accepted that should be part of an officer's training that we should implement? I mean, we don't have to create something new here, right? I mean, I, I'm sure it's out there at this point. Well, I think um, if we can actually get information from the department telling us what they've actually done, that would be very, very helpful. Um, but... We do, to your earlier point, need to really, um, there's a couple of things that need to be customized for Burlington, right? Burlington and Winooski are very different from the rest of Vermont, very different. Uh, the Winooski school system is now what they refer to as a uh, majority minority school system um, in Burlington. BIPOC students um, and uh, Director Green, please let me know if I'm wrong, but it's it's 35%, 30, 35% students. Yeah, the last, the last count I heard was getting re really close to 40%. Uh -huh. Boy, so thank you. Thank you for that. So we Burlington is changing. Burlington is changing. And we have most of our police officers don't live in Burlington. They live in other areas that don't have this diversity. Um, and also the, uh, the diversity that occurs, you know, BIPOC is not monolithic. There are so many different, different uh, peoples under that. And um, we have people that have relocated from other parts. I mean, I've been here for 30 years, but I came from a major metropolitan city. Um, there are others like me. We have new Americans who've come from all over the world. You know, what education are we doing um, for our officers so that they are uh, more aware and so that the term, quote unquote, cultural competency really means something? Um, so, yes, there is, you know, trainings that we can use, but as the, the speaker um, alluded to that we had at the police commission is that these are being looked at because they've been shown not to be effective. It's like you sit, you sit in kind of a classroom environment um, or, or, you know, a roll call environment and everybody's just kind of looking at their cell phones, waiting for the time to pass and information's not, not seeking in and it's not being done in a way that really makes people um, to, to prompt people toward change is what I guess I would say. Thank you. Great. And also want to flag that we do have Karen on board. Um, so welcome, Karen. If you have anything to say on any of these sections, would obviously love your thoughts. Not to sure, make you speak I, right now. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I, I apologize. I have um, I'm short staff, so I had to be on a call, but I'm here and I am listening and certainly uh, willing to participate. Thanks, Karen. And then to wrap, I mean, I guess to try to move us to some conclusion on this item, um, 
it sounds like what we feel like next steps is, is to get information from the department. And when I say get information, I am assigning this to the police commission and Milo, feel free to veto that. But that we ask the department to give information either to public safety or to the police commission on what has been done historically. Um, and then we see if there is a gap between REIB's one-time anti-racism training and what we understand to be whatever the best practice recommendation envisioned by CNA on cultural competency. And if so, then we try to do something to fill it. And if not, then we just have, we just add it to the list as CNA recommended, or maybe even change the name to anti-racism training. We would, I believe that, I think we would have to go to the mayor and ask the mayor to ask the department to provide the information. The police commission, we have tried to get the information. And then we were told that all hands on deck were to provide CNA with all the requested information, and then that would be included. Um, and then it wasn't. I feel, I'm certainly happy to bring that back to our chairman and say we want to make another formal request, but because our other requests have been ignored, I don't know how effective it would be. I think it would be better to um, having had a conversation with the mayor before, the mayor seems convinced that this information does in fact exist. So I think it would be better to make a formal request of him to get this information from the police department. Thank you. Great. So I've changed the next steps to police commission and public safety request from the mayor and acting chief to get a summary of what has been done in the way of trainings generally and cultural competency specifically. Um, and I feel like I always need to act actors. It's like REIB director and I don't know, public safety. Determine if there is a gap between REIB's one time a one time anti-racism training. Oh, I'm gonna put Karen in here since she's on. <laughs> and I was, gonna, I was gonna volunteer and I was gonna ask what the question was and what information <laughs> you were looking for, but Taisha will tell me. <laughs> um, so I I hear what Commissioner Grant is saying, and I'm certainly happy to assist with this. So please right. include me. So REIB so, director, NHR director, determine what is the gap between REIB's one-time anti-racism training and CNA's cultural competency suggestion, if any, and then based on that, we potentially identify some, if there are any gaps, ways to fill them. And by we, I again mean HR director. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> Thoughts, and I can read that again and or share my screen would potentially be an option. And then one change on the recommendation that I'm at least putting a note on is um, that there's at least been a suggestion to replace cultural competency with anti-racism in the directive. Any other I thoughts? I feel that's what it needs to be because this is what we're dealing with. We're trying to make things sound too soft and things. Have, and because of that, um, I don't want to say things. Well, well, I will say it. Things haven't been taken as seriously as they should, which is why some of our officers has found themselves in, in difficult situations. We also, the community, one of the things that I have been concerned about for some time now is when we look at this trust factor, if, if we have police officers who need to stop, um, a BIPOC person uh, in the old North End, 
social media lights up saying, what are they doing? You know, they're, they're stopping to buy popular. So they, they stopped this person. What do they do? What do they do? We can't have that. The community needs to know that officers are out there with a job to do, and they can't question every stop that they do. Right. They can't. So we can't have the community assuming every single time that because a BIPOC person is stopped, that that's not appropriate, right? We can't have people just make that assumption. But at the same time, because we have these other things happening, especially in regard to, you know, the the two outstanding lawsuits that the city can't seem to settle, um, that still breeds distrust. So, so that's that's what my concern is. In order for our officers to be out there to effectively do their job, they need the community trust. The community is going to trust them more if they feel that these steps in training are are occurring and being taken seriously. Um, it is it's so important. I can't I can't stress it enough. Thank you. Great and. Just if we can keep focus to the, thank you. That was important, Milo. But if we can stay focused to each one of the specific recommendations, which I know is going to be really hard because it's they're all tied together. Jeff, go ahead. I think you wanted to say something as well. No, I was just going to say. I mean, this we seem to be at an impasse with this one issue, um, racism and cultural training, and it takes a lot of different forms, and we don't have all the information from the police about what's taking place today and what best practices should be followed moving forward. So we know this is an issue, but there's a boatload of recommendations that we've got to get through um, that are not related to this. Um, how do we move forward doing that? Um, in, yeah, in can you tell me more about why you think we're at an impasse? No, we've we've talked quite a lot about it, but we don't have any answers from the police. So we're kind of at an impasse with how do we move forward with this? Um, well, I think we've got some next steps. And I think that I, at least from what I've heard the acting chief say is I feel like he's done something to pull something together. So maybe at this point, it's just a communication breakdown, hopefully. And I think getting that and figuring out having some HR and training people look at what has been done and making some recommendations on what to do next. I don't think we're at an impasse. I think we've gotten to at least some next steps in terms of what to do and how to do it. I would say maybe we can move on to the next one if folks are feeling good enough about this. I'm good with that. Great. Something similar here is the next recommendation is supervisors will be alert for and respond to indicators of potential bias policing. And I think that this is touching on a theme that I at least found in this section is that in some cases, it just puts a lot of the onus on folks to know and understand and or have definitions and or decide what is to a level that needs to be reported. And so the suggestion here was to include examples for their officers and what these indicators may be. Thoughts on how to tackle this. Do we have recommendations to them on what the indicator should be? Do we have recommendations on who should decide what the indicator should be? As a, as a racial justice professional, that the language bothers me. I'm not sure who wrote it in that policy, but it bothers me. Um, supervisors will be alert for and respond to indications of potential biased policing. Um, I don't even know, like, so what's the process here? So let's say so a couple of officers go out they pull someone over, they write their report, and whatever they write in their report is what the supervisors are gonna see, right? So how are they gonna be alert to any of the potential bias if the officers can say whatever they want to say, regardless if it's accurate or not? And 
they can say that it wasn't bias, that they pulled the person over because, you know, the taillight was blown or they were speeding or whatever the case may be. Um, but let's say it escalates and, you know, use of force was hand, handed out at that point. I, I just don't know how supervisors are, unless they're driving in the car with the officer and unless they're trained on, you know, racism and anti-racism in the historic context, context of policing, I'm not sure they're going to know how to do that. So even if you give an example, it still can be twisted and morphed into something totally different that says that it's not bias. I mean, that is the history of policing. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, so you're talking about like narrative indicators. So like, right. And I think one of the things that I talked about with um, acting chief John was that we, that was it with him? Um, but that there's a potential to doing indicators. So if you have, and I mean, I guess this is, this is also about collecting more information. I don't know what the police department's capacity is for doing this, but if you have things like, okay, you know, you take all of the reports and if we know at an aggregate that more people are getting pulled over, can we disaggregate that to each officer so that if it starts to be like, oh, you seem to in particular be maybe pulling over more so that it's not just like a narrative form, but it's also like a data form being like, hey, you as an officer seem to be maybe pulling over more people of color, whatever. I don't know how many of those indicators we actually have. And then if that is the case, having that be a conversation of like, hey, have you noticed this, that maybe you're doing this more than the average BPD officer? Why do you think that is? Um, I think that that's the conversation that he and I had. Isn't but that data remember. already there? The data is already know. there, right? They know the data, the which data. officers are pulling over which people. I mean, the data is already there. So are they saying- Right, but this is specifically saying supervisors should be monitoring this. Yes. I don't know if that's happening. Yeah, that is not happening. Or if they're looking at it, they're not acting on it. Um, this has been discussed. This has been discussed during uh, uh, quite a few meetings. And um, in particular, it was discussed when we were reviewing the yearly report. Um, and it was asked point blank if data, and, and this was to the city statisticians who put together the yearly report, does data exist showing um, use of force by officer, which would also include um, other statistics around uh, race and the racial disparities? And uh, we're told that yes, that data exist i point blank asked for the data and was told that it was a, a very nervous like kind of looking over to the acting chief well the acting chief would have to authorize that and he refused to do so i've also interestingly as a quick side note had a reporter give me information from uh one of the deputies Depositions, I guess uh, as depositions go public, they can be accessed. And they were like, here, here's some use of uh, force officer, uh, use of force numbers by officer with racial disparity information. What do you think? And I'm like, well, I, this is certainly interesting, but can I see the whole deposition as opposed to these these two pages because i believe it looking at things in in context they didn't want to give me the whole thing so it's like well, if you're not giving me the whole thing i've got no comment um and i don't think it's appropriate to comment on specific officers publicly anyway but there does need to be some serious private conversations going on and i fear that they're not so using the data there is data available and the department needs to use that data, but they don't seem to be willing to. I mean, there's this little data that says that certain officers in, put in certain shifts, certain times a day are, are going to be in certain 
situations that dramatically increase the racial disparity. So we need to look at why that is actually happening. Uh, so the data is there. And, and how do we say to the department that it's important for you to follow that data and put something in place when you see these disparities by officer, see these disparities by shift, et cetera? Thank you. Go ahead, Jeff. I, I mean, one, one thought would be to increase the number of minority officers on the police force, because I don't see too many officers of color on the police force, is, have, has there been a recruiting effort to do that? Um, I don't know the answer to that question, although I think there has been at least from what I've heard the uh, acting chief say about some of the newer officers. But I wonder how you think that would help supervisors. I, no, I'm just, I'm just thinking human nature is that you're not going to you're not going to show any, if you had racist tendencies, you're not going to show them in the presence of a minority coworker. Just, you know, it would, it would certainly, I think, help. Um, I don't but, know if that's, I, I don't know if I agree with that, but. Is that too I, simple? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Karen. Yeah, thank you. Um, we, there will be recruitment efforts. I, um, aside from <clears throat> what was just shared, which I, I don't necessarily agree with, but um, there are recruitment efforts. Um, we are looking to be more of a partner in terms of you know HR working together with the police department. Um, the police department has traditionally recruited its own, and you know with with their own officers and. Um, we hope to be a part of that. We hope to be part of interviews, but I don't think that solves the question in terms of, you know, supervisors sort of, <laughs> I'm not sure that I would agree with that bullet point in, in terms of, you know, the current culture. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think there's, you know, like Milo or Commissioner Grant had shared, you know, there's certainly these, these metrics that are available, but I'd have to really think about that question. That's an interesting bullet point. Um, it sounds like, you know, the work needs to be done internally some way, but um, there's a lot of variables there. So I'm not, I'm not really sure about that. Okay, so all I've got, and Jeff, I didn't mean to just shoot you down, but I, I do think that, yeah, I think that there's a little, it's, it's, I don't, I don't think it's that simple. And I don't think that people often know when they are being biased, I think is part of what makes it so difficult to train out or anything else is I don't think that it's just, oh, I should just stop doing this when this person is around. I don't, um, but what I'm hearing say, and maybe this is, I don't know if this is a priority or not. And I think it's going to be hard for us to talk about prioritizing until we've done some of the things, but I think that there could be maybe not just an example of indicators, but maybe a suggestion of like two or three indicators that, you know, the city statisticians work with the acting police chief supervisors to provide folks for like annual reviews and things like that, which aren't necessarily, or I don't, I don't know how, when the BPD, but that supervisors can use at least in casual conversation with their or in formal conversations, why I don't know, they need to be casual with their officers in terms of like, hey, we're just collecting data on the snow and I want you to know that this is where you're at on these kinds of things. Is that, does that sound close to where we're landing? I, I would say yes. Um, and did you want to go into the indicators now or what was the, um, no, I think that this is, sorry, just because I don't, again, I don't know that we on the call have the right <laughs> understanding of what data we have, but I wonder if the police commission and the acting chief and the 
city status sessions could say which ones we could easily like if Milo says we already have the data then it's like what could we easily pull out without too much additional like, data keeping or anything else that we could use okay yeah I mean that sounds fine to me to kind of take that route that just seems the most like efficient way honestly so um, I could take that as a takeaway um, for general information, like I know they're not going to give me anything specific, but I can ask um, similar questions that I did before that we, and under the members of the, the commission asked before, and just say, hey, we want to know if we can get A, B, C, D, E, and F so that the leadership team at the department has this information to review. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should we tackle one more and call it a day? <laughs> I do think so. Um, only because, yeah, that each one does take a little bit. Yeah. And so I wonder, and I wonder, Sorry, so even in doing this, I wonder, um, because this does take a while. So I wonder, I feel like we're gonna need a more efficient process than us talking individually through all of these. And I don't 100% know what that looks like, but I think it was good to do this just to know that we are gonna spend a significant amount of time on each recommendation. So I don't know, we had talked about initially when, we're do, when we were doing our initial planning meeting before we invited any of you, if, um, we would do this in small groups or if maybe like public safety really should take the first crack at it and have some ideas and then you all yay nay some of them although i'm not sure i would have come up with all of this without all of this come up even with these two without you all so i don't i don't know but i think this will be good for karen to see and we can i have um, kind of a might be a crazy pie in the sky idea but i'm just kind of curious as like so we want to go through all of these findings and recommendations, obviously, like that's the whole point. Um, if we could like make one document where there's like, you know, we could do 1.21 and like have everything kind of like in a row and then you have like each of our names kind of in there and just putting in that input. So it's all in one place that we, we can all like talk through it where we don't have to necessarily, like if they're really obvious ones that are a little bit shorter that are like, we agree with the language, check. We agree with kind of like where this is going, check in terms of like that recommendation. Then that's a quick conversation of like, okay, that one's good. Okay, let's move on to this more in-depth one where everyone had a lot of comments and their boxes are pretty full. Like maybe this does take a little bit more of like out of committee time, but I do think, you know, if we're not all in the document at the same time, it's not really an issue, but again, it could be, so I don't know. I just think that there is a better way, but it also is very valuable to like talk through all of it. So you do want that piece as well. I'm just kind of curious or maybe keep it even like anonymous in a document or something. I'm not really sure what, what a way around the quorum thing would be, but like, I do think we should maybe streamline it a little bit, but I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. Definitely open to any suggestions. Yeah, and that was one of the things I was going to ask Jared is if we have a Google Doc that is open to the public, but only is we have the accessing power, if that's something we can do. I don't know if you know the answer to that. Um, so if you're wanting to do a Google Doc that's open to the public and that you're like editing in real time is or just like over the course of sort of as an ongoing thing outside of meetings, is that what you're, yeah. yeah. So, um, the, so just a couple of things. The first thing being that um, any time that you have a quorum number of um, committee members and you're meeting, even if it's electronically over email um, or in a working Google Doc, you technically are having a meeting. Um, and so you just wanna be really careful about um, two things. First of all, obviously, anything that goes in that document would be non-binding, right? It would just be like a free flow of ideas. You're right. you wouldn't be taking any official action. Um, 
And then the second thing being that is if this is something that's to be discussed um, at a final meeting, um, you just want to be really um, careful about, you know, having all of the discussion happen in this unworn way and then just sort of um, in a very cursory way voting on it because all the substantive discussion has taken place offline. So I think it's fine to use that kind of document to form initial ideas. Um, but in terms of the real substantive stuff, the point of the open meeting law is to warn it. And so, for example, if a member of the public wanted to come in and weigh in during public comment, that they'd have the opportunity to do so. So I think there's a way to balance it if you just sort of are like, okay, here's going to be our, our talking points for the next meeting and just hear some things to kind of mm. uh, be considering ahead of time so that everyone's really on the same page. And when you do come together, it's an efficient process while also steering clear of any open meeting law violations in terms of um, walking right up to the line of taking substantive action. And because the public has sort of has a right to know, you know, how much information or has a right to know the sort of back and forth as to how you actually end up at a particular course of action. So I think the way to do it is just to use it as really maybe more of a planning tool, like here's what's to be discussed. Um, and then you actually use the meeting to have the like nitty gritty decisions, but certainly it can be used as an efficiency tool and a planning tool for sure. And um, if you have more questions about what that would look like uh, logistically, I'm, I'm happy to connect um, offline with um, a non-quorum number of you. <laughs> Great, thanks. Um, and then, so to swing us to one second, Jeff, I do wanna go to the last 1.3, just cause I'm very curious about where this is at, which is logging all complaints. And I feel like Milo might have the best answer to that, but I wanna go to Jeff first cause they raised their hand. No, I've got to bow out for another meeting. Um, so I apologize. But <clears throat> so what I've heard so far is we need the police to tell us which recommendations they're already working on. Correct? Right. Mm -hmm. And I also heard that we're thinking that amongst ourselves, we need to prioritize which ones we think are more important than others. Is that what I heard? Not more or, important, but like more straightforward, I or, think straightforward or urgent like easy to do or urgent probably okay well, I, I i do feel that yeah more urgent or well i think that's kind of the same as, as more important because i do think that there are certain things that you know when we take a look at how the community felt in terms of the protests that occurred what led to people calling for the alternative positions and um, changing the amount of officers, like those root causes have to take a priority. I actually think a lot of items on these recommendations are gonna be a lot easier. We just ended up with the uh, issues around race and racial disparities <laughs> and training ended up being listed first, probably because it, it's so important and, and is the source of a lot of root causes of, of trust and, and, and other things in the community. And I think that's why it took so much time because that is just really something that, um, that means a lot to many people in our community that has not had the attention um, that it warrants. And so I think that's why it's been so difficult and it's taken so long to kind of talk about Thank you. Uh, but I can also give, if you want me to, to talk about that next recommendation, I can tell you that the- Wait, um, Milo, I don't know if oh, Jeff was done. So I just want to oh, make I'm sure. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. No, I'm just trying to move this forward. So, so we need the police to weigh in, and then we need to give our own assessment of what needs to be delved into more deeply or what's important to move forward um, on, but, and I, and I know the, the race issue is real and important and it, it, and it, it permeates the document in many different areas too. Um, so we can get off on a lot of tangents, but what I, I'm fearful of is from, from, from what we're, the way I'm looking at this is that we're, we're 
we're, we do focus on the race issue, which we have to. I'm not making any light of that. But we don't want to lose sight of the other things in our community that are going, you know, that are not being addressed in, in a timely manner um, and that, that need to be. Um, and I wouldn't want to, you know, go another year or two and not really delve into those other things I mentioned earlier that really need to be addressed. Um, so anyway, I'll leave it at that. I do have to run. Sorry about that, folks. I'll look forward to the next meeting. Thanks. No worries. Thanks for joining Thanks, us, Jeff. Jeff. So I, um, I appreciate what Mr. Nick just said. Um, and, and for those of you who don't know, I've actually been on Church Street with Mr. Nick walking up and down and, and talking about his concerns and the concerns of the downtown businesses. Um, and one of the things I stressed to him was that, you know, being a Burlington resident and being on the police commission, it's important that things are looked at holistically for the whole of Burlington, right? Not, not that what's happening downtown isn't important, but that you can, you know, shoo some people away and get them away from church street, but they're still in Burlington. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's having to do, have this holistic view and also the issues around race. It's we've, put them off that they've it's constantly been pushed back pushed back pushed back pushed back and i think we're really at a crossroads where we have to get an honest handle on this we have to take honest steps um that are are, are qualified and quantified in a manner at which they have not been it's literally trying to ride out each controversy um so that, that that's my concern. I don't want to see it put to the back burner because we're going to do something else because it's constantly been put back to in the back burner, which has caused the, the community concern, you know, going back to those root causes. And I think um, that's just something that we really need need to be aware of because if we don't fix it, it's only getting worse. The, the numbers, the number of incidents go down, but the racial disparities continue to go up and we have no honest evaluation or explanation of why that's occurring. And, that, and that's a big problem. It's a real big problem. Um, I can talk about um, the 1.3. I can say that the police commission has been doing some really extensive work on this. Um, we had NACOL trainings over the summer that were so valuable. I just can't express that enough. And they really showed us what was going on nationally, what was being developed as best practice, um, several examples uh, across different cities, um, across the country of different sizes, and uh, the different forms of oversight that have been happening. And we've really changed the way that complaints ha are being handled. So there is a lot of work um, being done on that. Um, if this body would like a summary, I can definitely put some uh, bullet points together to reflect the change. Um, we do have some, quite frankly, heated discussions in executive sessions about some of the complaints, especially uh, the levels that the department wants to categorize the complaints versus what the commission thinks they should be categorized as. So we're trying to, to work through this, through those uh, issues. Um, but we are um, requesting that they be documented in a way that they've not been documented, uh, doing basic things like contacting someone to say, hey, we got your complaint. You know, that was something that wasn't done before uh, and making sure that people uh, receive confirmation that complaints were received, that were complaints were received, that they are getting uh, some type of response regarding their uh, complaints, um, et cetera. Great, Milo. And does that include, just to make sure that I understand it for this one in particular, and I know the commission's been doing a lot of work on this, but does that mean that 
all complaints are now logged or is that just for like some of the ones that had been logged you've changed the process for what that looks like we are trying to move forward with logging all of the complaints we now get um if a complaint is submitted electronically the commission now gets a copy of that automatically which did not happen before there are um issues around complaints that are submitted in other ways where we are still trying to work on to make sure that we get copies of those in order to include them in that process great um i feel like i my thoughts, thank you so much, Milo. I feel like that's helpful. I feel like for next steps is just give police commission any support that they need to make sure that that continues to happen, police commission and the police department. Um, I guess- I would, I would love um, the, I, I would love some, I would love to have the commission have some support when we're asking for information and it's it's refused to us. I think that remains a big problem. Um, I don't know if that is something that the we need to involve the city council in or the city attorneys. Um, it was, was Nicole suggested that we have a MOU around that, that um, some cities and towns have this with their departments with regards to documentation information that's requested that it, it, it does have to be turned over. Um, there's already things written that say we should get this information, but we, but we don't. Um, so that is still a problem. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, I, one, again, just want to go back to thanking everyone for being patient with us as we started the meeting today. I know there was a lot of back and forth and delays. Um, so just appreciate everyone being flexible and sticking with us. Um, this, if we do it this way, this will be a long process. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, um, but certainly we'll send this recording and these notes to um, Karen and get her thoughts. Before we close out, I wonder if um, anybody else has any other thoughts, Oren, happy to hear anything from you or Karen or Taisha and Jane, of course, before we close. I am. Um, I think Commissioner Stromberg's idea is pretty good if we can get some sort of working document. Um, we've been here for, what, close to two hours and we've gone through three points. So yeah, this is going to be a pretty extensive process where if we had like some sort of working document and we could see which ones generate the most debate, we could probably concentrate on them first. And the ones that we more or less all agree on. I mean, is there really any need to debate a lot of that outside of you know that 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 kind of agreement? So I think that would be a very good way to to move this along in a bit more of a efficient manner. Yeah, and curious to hear your thoughts because yes, I think that there's both agreeing and disagreeing, but I wonder if there's also I what like I feel like I think some of the things I guess that have come out in this is the how of some of these. So I wonder, I'm not sure how to capture. I think there's the like, yes, we need to do this. No, we don't. And I wonder how we get to some of the like, how we need to do that and have that be more of a dialogue between the department and some other folks um, without, without this. And I don't have an answer to that. So maybe it's that we just don't do that because it takes too long, but. I would say that's pretty important bit, like just on, I don't mean to jump back, but just in 1.2, I would definitely be saying we need to figure out how we do that. Um, yeah, but again, I'm, 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 I'm a Jew, I don't know how we would do that. So okay. we'll just generate more debate on it, but yeah. Great. So I think Josh might highlight some of these ones that we need help with, and we need more discussion with how do we do this. Okay, that, that makes sense. Thanks, Oren. Karen, I saw you on mute. I'm just wondering if some of these aren't, and I know this is a public, you know, report and everything we do are, is going to be public, but some of these seem um, 
that they're going to have internal resolution, like the how is going to be up to the administration mm -hmm. and or Taisha or myself or something like that. So, you know, perhaps, you know, and we'll talk to Karen, but, you know, coming, coming prepared, if there's just anything at all that we could um, share or any way that we could chunk the work out, like, you know, a couple of folks, Oren just talked about, you know, like some sort of working document where, and maybe it is overseen by the city attorney's office. It's like, no, don't touch that. <laughs> you can't. But it, it really does seem like there are, um, the how is actually going to be um, less of a, you know, so folks can weigh in, but I mean, I think there's a lot, a lot of what I see is um, it's just assigning the work out to the right departments and, or to my department. And, you know, so is it helpful for me to be part of the conversation maybe and listen, but I think that, you know, some of these assignments will be um, uh, directives that come from this committee. Yep. Okay, that's great. Sweet. So, Tayshia, go ahead. Sorry, it's my turn to cook, so making dinner. Um, oh, it's not going to be as good. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I got to eat for that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that some of these things, like Karen said, are going to have to go through the administration and, and possibly even the acting chief. Um, it is going to take a long time, like Oren was saying. Um, we only got through, what, three? Um, so I would hope that the process will be a little bit more smoother. But, you know, a lot of people have a lot to say on each one of these recommendations. And I think that it's only fair that everyone gets heard, um, even if it's going to take a while. So I'm kind of on the fence, but I'm really um, just leaning on the people on this on this board to come up with a, a process that will work for everybody. That's all. And thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope maybe I think to some extent, maybe, yeah, picking which ones we have this much conversation about, because to some extent, I hope this is maybe me being too optimistic, but I hope that like some of these are conversations that just need to be had like across various groups. And I think, I don't know if this is the right place or the forum, but it's certainly like one. And so I think if we can at least, I don't think it's sustainable for us to do this for every point, but yeah, maybe if we can have some kind of initial system where we go through all of them um, with some kind of ranking, voting, consensus, and then we do this for some of the bigger ones. I think that could be could be powerful and good. So yeah, you like surveys and <laughs> didn't we do something like this when I was on the public safety committee where we um, had to like sort of you know aggregate put everything together and we had an efficient way of doing it. I think maybe it might have been Shereen, but um, Certainly some of these are a checkbox and then some of them are larger discussions. So we're gonna have to decide how we're gonna get at that. Yeah, I think that's great. I do like my surveys. Um, and yeah, and I also apologize because I think part of the part of the stop and go has also been that we've not had an official chair with me always surprised chairing the meetings. So um, yeah, so. Um, I'll talk to Karen about, and it might be that maybe next week it'll just be public safety again, and we'll give you all the week off while we regroup in a way that is not, not meeting, um, open meeting laws, but, um, I'll make sure that either she or I send out an email about that if that's the case. And again, appreciate folks' patience, and we'll try to find a way to make this a little bit more streamlined. I could, uh, I just want to throw in one other thing uh, with regards to the recommendations on the use of force policy uh, with the new use of force policy that the state of Vermont um, put into place, I believe it overrode um, what was there previously. So we would definitely want to look at, at that document. Um, is that that correct, or not? am I remembering that correctly? Uh, yes, uh, I don't really know why CNA went over its force policies. They're, they're kind of null and void right 
now it's new state policy is what well, what well, we have to adhere to so yeah so that's like a, that there's so those are several points where we don't look at we don't have to look at because of that change Great. just wanted to bring that up thank you Mila 1.6 probably true Warren, we can't hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the use of force. Uh, based, I'd say I'm, all of those points under the use of force, one, we don't have to go through. I'm not sure why CNA recommended uh, all these things. The use of force, the statewide use of force policy supersedes all that now. So we don't have to discuss them. Yes, I think at the time they, they started doing their evaluation, um, it was not yet in effect. And I'm not sure that they were notified that that was happening, which is why they proceeded with those recommendations. But now that we know that it's in effect, um, we can bypass those. Great. Thanks for bringing that up, Milo. So I think definitely let's plan a meeting on the 25th maybe on the 18th, but maybe not while we get Karen back up to speed um, if she's back next week. And so, yeah, if folks can plan on still setting aside the 25th, I think we should be ready by then and hopefully send some information out to you before then in terms of potentially some kind of consensus-based document. Um, and if nobody has anything else, pause for, go ahead, Taisha. I don't know. I was just going to say bye. <laughs> Great. Then I move to adjourn. <laughs> Great. Thank you all so much. Appreciate folks showing up. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good one, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>